I think this issue about these official documents with Dart trying to hunt down and get Chantelle Baker off um, or Operation People off media, and as I said, i got to defend people I might disagree with. Branding the platform as a disinformation, part of a disinformation network, and you've just heard a real-world example of how damaging that is as we try and go about our business. And also a decision out of the Supreme Court upholding Auckland City Council's decision to bar, and this is going back some ways, Molyneux and Southern, the Ameri oh, overseas speakers, um, branded alt-right, um, from speaking at Auckland Council venues. Unfortunately, that has been upheld, which I think is a rather chilling, uh, a rather chilling um, decision by the Supreme Court and gives effect or gives power to the veto of the baying mob. Joining us to discuss the implications of all of this from the Free Speech Union is our friend Jonathan Ayling. Jonathan, nice to have you back, mate. Sean, always a pleasure. All right, look, I, can we first deal with DART, this group that literally seems to have been hunting individuals who have broken no law to try and get them taken off social media and branding an organisation like the platform a, disinform a part of a disinformation network. I find that all pretty distasteful and disturbing. As a free speech advocate, do you? Absolutely. I think uh, the fact that we have government oversight in public squares that are emerging online isn't the key issue itself. The key issue is the lack of transparency. We don't know who these people are or, or what they're really wanting to do. And we don't know actually what the restraints on them are. And so that's the key issue, I think. At one level, Sean, I think when you walk down uh, from from the studio there and you walk down Cuba Street, you're in a public location. And, and in our society, we do think some oversight is necessary there. Uh, and online, we don't want people inciting violence. We don't want people defaming. We don't want people threatening. These are... Never have, Jonathan. Never supported no, that. No, no, no. No, of course, of course not. But, but that, that, that's part of why I'm saying actually the fact that there is some uh, presence of an authority in, uh, in the online space is legitimate. This is way beyond that. This is uh, less, uh, far less transparent, and it seems to be operating more as vigilante uh, against those that they have vendettas against, like Chantal Baker, for example, rather than any sort of methodical way of looking through and assessing empirical harm that has been caused. And this buys into an entire wider culture, and you've been discussing it today. That is quite troubling. I, I do think I want to call out uh, Chantelle when she says we don't live in a democracy, uh, I might be out of step with, with maybe some of your listeners, but, but I think that's really overstating the issue. Uh, I, I think uh, words like that actually inflame and, and kind of distract from the issues that we are trying to address. Thankfully, we do live in a democracy still in New Zealand where many of our core freedoms are being upheld, but there are cultural issues at play that we do need to address. All right, Jonathan, how do we address them? How do we stop a group like DART, headed by, as far as we know, an ex-cop, targeting people like Chantelle Baker and trying to take them off social media when they have committed no crime? Absolutely. Well, again, I think it's important to note it's not like DART is taking anyone off social media. Uh, they are going to the to the social media platforms that do have terms and reference. And and I'll I'll talk about a, a meeting I recently had with some of the senior advisors at the Department of Internal Affairs on their content regulation review. And they said, "Oh, look, Jonathan, don't worry about our content regulation review. This is really uh, about enforcing contracts. When people go on a social media platform." They say they're going to abide by a certain set of, um, of, of, of content principles. And so we're just trying to enforce contract rules here. And I said, okay, but does that door swing both ways? Well, when what Elon business Musk, it of, is it of the government to ensure the performance of a contract between two parties, a contract it is not party to? Well, well, the... Uh, Contract uh, enforcement would, would stand in the realms of, of government enforcement quite easily. But I think what we need to also state is that 
the door swings both ways. If that platform isn't forcing uh, a set of principles on those people, well, then they should be allowed to express themselves as freely as they want. And we see that isn't the case with Twitter at the moment, for example. And so we see they showing their colours through that. And, 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 and that's where I, I totally agree. There, there is reason for real concern with uh, the dark figures emerging of this kind. And I'm pleased to see that they have uh, disbanded and, and aren't functioning under Te Whati Ora anymore. What I want to see is actually the government uh, no longer setting up these, these quasi-judicial... Well, but, 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 Jonathan, the other system. group is the Disinformation Project who are now just totally gone to ground. I can't figure out if they're government, getting government funding, if they're still linked to the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. They seem to be in slight retreat, but it's very shady. I mean, have you had any, oh, have you had any success in getting more information about the disinformation project? 